I'm Tom Malagany for Inside EVs, and I'm standing here in front of a 2021 Mustang Mach-E standard range all-wheel drive. We're gonna do the Inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test with this guy. I'm out here on the New Jersey Turnpike, just fully charged the car. At 100% charged, it was saying we have 190 miles of range. Let's see how true that is. This guy's combined EPA range rating is 211 miles, but the highway EPA range rating is 193.7 miles. Since this is a highway range test, that's typically our goal to see if we can at least match the EPA highway range rating. You may remember a few weeks ago, I did the 70 mile an hour highway range test on the Mustang Mach-E with the extended range battery pack. That was also all wheel drive. That vehicle had a combined EPA range rating of 270 miles and a highway EPA range rating of 249 miles. We were able to drive that 285 miles. So actually went 35 more miles or 36 more miles than its EPA rated highway range and 15 more miles than its combined EPA range rating. So we're hoping that the standard range battery pack also exceeds its EPA range rating, but we don't know until we do the test, which we're about to do now. I'm out here on the New Jersey Turnpike, just fully charged the car. Gonna head out now, see how far we go. I'll check back in when we're at 75% state of charge and see how far we went the first 25% of this trip. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All right, so we're a quarter of the way gone. We're at 75% state of charge, and we went an incredible 62 miles. I don't think that's gonna hold up. I don't think we're gonna finish up at over 240 miles, but um, hey, a great start. One thing I will add is that one of the things we check when we do these range tests is the wind, and I do have a seven mile an hour tailwind right now. So I'm expecting when I make the turnaround and start looping back up, I'm going to be facing a headwind and the range isn't gonna be quite as good. We were able to manage 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour in this first 25% uh, uh, of, the, of the trip. And that's a little bit better than when I did the, uh, the range test on the uh, all wheel drive Mach-E with the extended range battery pack. I finished up with 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So I think the tailwind has something to do with this, pushing us along a little bit, but that'll get corrected soon. That's why I drive in loops up and down the turnpike so that if there is wind and uh, elevation change, it hopefully it might not be perfect, but it helps to offset that. So a couple things I wanna point out, as we always do with these range tests, we check the tire pressure and we set it to the manufacturer's recommended pressure. Did that before we started. Um, if we need uh, uh, heating or air conditioning, try to use as little as possible so it doesn't affect the range too much. It's 82 degrees now, it was 77 when we started. So I have had to put the air conditioning on. I have it on auto and uh, 72 degrees in the cabin. It's just enough to keep me from sweating. Uh, if I wasn't on a range test, I'd probably have it cranked down to like 68. But in any event, it's enough to keep me relatively comfortable. So that's what we're gonna leave it at. Um, I checked the speedometer to GPS and it was right on 70 miles an hour, was 70 miles an hour. So we have the adaptive cruise control set at 70 miles an hour, cruising along here on the New Jersey Turnpike. I have it in whisper driving mode, which is the most efficient driving mode for the Mustang Mach-E. Uh, but as I mentioned before in our other tests, the driving mode doesn't make that much of a difference in our 70 mile an hour highway range test because we're driving at a constant 70 miles an hour. Where the driving mode plays a much bigger uh, role is when you're starting and stopping, accelerating off the line, and the motor gets more power and it can use more power. The only thing I will say is in, in some cars, when you put it in the most eco uh, efficient mode, it limits the power to like the air conditioning and so forth. I'm not really sure how that works on the Mustang Mach-E, um, but it feels like I'm getting the full 
air conditioning. So I don't think it, if it does limit, it doesn't limit it much. But we do this with all of the, the vehicles that we test. We always put them in the most efficient driving mode. That's the fairest way to compare them all, even though each electric vehicle has a different type of efficient driving mode. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna check back in when we're at 50% state of charge. I don't think we're gonna be at 124 miles like we would have been if we duplicate this first 25% of the trip, but who knows? I'll be happy if we're hanging around 110 at that point, but let's see. Check back with you at 50%. So we're at 50% state of charge now, and we've gone 118 miles. As expected, we didn't go quite as far in the second 25% of this trip as we did on the first. We had gone 62 miles when we reached the 75% state of charge mark. Now at 118 miles, that means we went 56 miles further. Uh, still pretty good. Not as great as the first quarter, but I really wasn't expecting that. Um, we're only showing 100 miles of remaining range. Even though we went 118 with the first 50%, the car's telling us we can only go about another 100 miles. Uh, I expect to be somewhere around there because I don't think we're going to get as far in the second half as we did on the first half. That happens frequently with many of these range tests we do. Uh, the our efficiency also dropped. If you remember, it was 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour for the first 25%. We're now down to 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That's what I actually finished up with when I did my 70 mile an hour highway range test on the extended range all wheel drive Mustang Mach-E. So I was kind of figuring we would average that anyway, but let's see, it dropped, you know, um, 0.2 miles per kilowatt hour in that second uh, stage that we just completed. We'll check back in at 25% uh, state of charge. The only thing that's changed is it's gotten hotter. It's now 87 degrees. So it's quite hot outside today. The air conditioning has been on the whole time. Uh, it's only showing that climate use has taken 2% of the energy that we've used today so that's not that bad uh, if we finish up with that then you figure it might have cost us four or five miles of range that's all uh, in any event check back when we're at 25 percent state of charge okay we're at 25 percent state of charge and we have driven 172 miles. So very close to the last 25% segment. If you recall, the first 25%, we went 62 miles. Then we went 56 miles from 75% to 50%. Now from 50% to 25%, we've gone 54 miles. So not bad. 172 miles. Looks like we're definitely going to finish up somewhere around 220, 225. Um, pretty good. Super impressive, especially when you consider that the Maki -E has an EPA overall EPA range rating of 211 miles, the the uh, standard range all-wheel drive version, and its EPA highway range rating is 193.7. So we're gonna blow by both of those, uh, even the combined rating. Uh, and the it's interesting, interesting thing about the combined rating, Ford derates its combined ratings. It voluntarily lowers what the actual tests are for what they tell customers. This vehicle actually had an EPA combined range rating of 216 miles, but they submitted to the EPA that they wanted it listed as 211. Now the EPA will allow you to do that. They'll let you lower the range rating. They won't let you say it's more than what it can do, but they do let you lower it. And some automakers do that. Ford is one of them. Same thing with the uh, extended range oval drive version that I did the uh, range test on a few weeks ago. That's EPA range rated at 270 miles per charge, but the actual testing came in at 276. So, um, why would an automaker voluntarily lower their range rating? I guess it's because they want to under-promise and over-deliver. 
They don't want customers complaining because as you know, with electric vehicles, you can't always get the EPA range rating. If it's cold out, they don't go as far. If you drive fast, they won't go as far. So I think Ford wanted to, I guess, manage expectations of their customers with their Mach-E's and, and shave five or six miles off the actual test results to give people a little bit of a cushion. Now, um, does that hurt their sales? It, it may. People look at the number and say, oh, that's, you know, I wish it was higher. Evidently, Ford thinks it's more important to um, over deliver than it is for them to sell more cars. And the mach selling great. So, you know, I, I guess it's not hurting them too much. We'll see how that happens over time. Um, okay, so for this range test, temperature is now 87 degrees. It dropped down a little bit. The only thing I will add is this was a difficult uh, per time from 50% to 25%. I hit a wall of traffic. There was a uh, an accident where we just stopped all of a sudden. I sat there for about 15 to 20 minutes. Just, you know, I, I didn't turn the, uh, the climate control off because at that point it was 91 degrees. Um, so we used a little bit more AC, might have shaved a mile or two off the range, probably not, not, nothing more than that, but um, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, there was an accident and they just shut the turnpike. Once they opened it up, we were able within a mile to get back up to 70 miles an hour. So uh, it's not like I was driving much under, but we were stopped for a while. So this, this has been a long, um, long 25% of the trip. Uh, we'll check in when we're at the Electrify America charging station at hopefully at 0% state of charge or very close to it and do the wrap up then. Well, that's a wrap. We made it. We pulled into the Target parking lot about a half a mile after the state of charge hit zero. So perfectly timed test, 100% down to 0%. We ended up going 226 miles. So that last leg, we had the same range as from uh, 50% to 25%, 54 miles. So in the four quarters, we did 62 miles, 56 miles, 54 miles, and then 54 miles for a total of 226 miles of range. Coincidentally, that's the exact same range we finished up with when we did the Polestar 2 range test about a month ago, 226 miles. The interesting thing is the Polestar 2 is EPA range rated at 234 miles. The Mustang Mach-E standard range all-wheel drive is EPA range rated at 211 miles. So even though it has 23 miles less of EPA range rating, it was able to do the same amount of, or cover the same amount of ground at 70 miles an hour in very similar conditions on the same course where I go up and down the New Jersey Turnpike. So 211 mile EPA range rating, 193.7 highway EPA range rating, real world 70 miles an hour, 226 miles for the Mustang Mach-E standard range all wheel drive. This is actually the Mustang Mach-E with the least amount of range. There's like seven different versions of the Mach-E. This is the one that has the lowest EPA range rating. So even the let's say worst range Mustang Mach-E can do 226 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour in fairly favorable conditions. Now it was hot today. We got up to 91 degrees, uh, but you know, warm weather is good driving condition for EVs, except for the fact you have to have the air conditioning on. I had the air conditioning on pretty much the whole time at 72 degrees. Uh, and uh, that showed that the, uh, the Mach-E tells you, gives you a breakdown of where the energy went. And it shows that 3% of my energy used in this whole drive went to climate control. So if you wanted to say I didn't, I, uh, I didn't have the AC on the whole time, you might be able to add another five miles to that and push it over 230 miles. That's fantastic for the Mustang Mach-E that has the lowest amount of range. Okay, that's it for the Mach-E 70 mile an hour highway range rating. Don't forget, click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming range tests. 
first impressions, all that stuff we do here on Inside EVs YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.